Architects detail, contractors detail. Why don't buildings get constructed based on the architect's detail? Hello and welcome to Operations Manual. I'm your host, Murat Salsigil, and today we are going to talk about the Perelman Center, the new performing arts center in New York City. I want to start with the most uncommon aspect of this building. At first, the facade appears like a stone cladding, but in reality, this is a glass facade. The architect Rex wanted to use translucent stone as the primary facade material. When we say translucent stone, we are talking about a stone panel thin enough to let some amount of daylight pass through. There are two mid-century modern buildings use similar design and materials. The Beinike Rare Book Library in Yale University, designed by Gordon Dunshaw, and St. Pius Church, the Paris Center in Switzerland, designed by Franz Fu. So what was the facade detail used in these buildings? Despite both buildings being in cold climates, they rely on a thin layer of marble captured with a metal frame and attached to a steel structure. And that is it. Again, these buildings are from the 1960s, from an era when high-performance facades weren't the standard. Buildings were still depending on a single layer of glass, and the facade performance as a thermal barrier was not anything like we are used to build today. So these two historical buildings have to re heavily rely on mechanical system for thermal comfort. Today, this makes no sense. So the first problem the architect had to solve was modernizing the use of translucent stone. They come up with an innovative and clever solution. They took a thin layer of marble and laminated it with glass and made it part of the insulated glass assembly. A simple but highly effective solution. You keep the translucent effect of the stone, but make it as efficient as any, any modern glass building surrounding the Perelman Center. Good job, Rex. When we hone into the architect's detail further, we can clearly see they wanted to see the panels without any visible framing, clips, fixing or fasteners. Pay attention to the insulated glass. It is set back from the front of the glass, making room for the attachment channel while hiding it behind the stone layer. There is a deliberate effort of creating an offset within the glass assembly just to achieve glass-to-glass -glass edges. The architect also proposes a method of fixing designed to achieve glass-to-glass -glass joints. This method is called toggle glazing, where a metal plate is pushed through the joint and rotated 90 degrees, engaging with the metal channel at the back and keeping the panel in place by applying pressure. It is essentially a pressure plate, but it is designed to be behind the visible part of the panel, allowing what the industry calls all-glass look. Alright, now well, I want to draw your attention to the way the architect intended to achieve air and water tightness. The architectural detail shows three sets of gasket-to-gasket -gasket seals. This type of seal is an acceptable method for keeping some of the wind driven water and dirt out, and also for creating some degree of pressure equalization. But it is not by itself to achieve water and air tightness. These gaskets will shrink and expand. They may not engage as perfectly as they are shown in the drawings once installed on the field. And if you think about it, that each strip of gasket will be poked with toggle place at these two points along every edge of every panel. The point is, there are better ways out there and we'll explore them later. Now, let's pause for a second and remember, in construction, with every decision, you are triggering a chain of events that has a cost or schedule implications. Laminating a piece of stone into a glass assembly requires very close coordination and risk sharing between the glass manufacturer and the stone supplier. Creating an offset within the glass assembly increases manufacturing costs. Choosing toggle glazing as an installation method dictates that the panels would have to be installed one by one. The field crew would have to work on every edge of every panel, inserting metal pieces, rotating them and securing them. I'm estimating there are more than 5,000 panels on this facade, and given a large number of panels, you can imagine toggle glazing is not the most suitable method for this project. When the contractor comes on board, they look at architect's detail, and they typically imply something like, let's talk about a plan of yours, Mr. Architect. I think it is good, except it sucks. So let me do the plan, that way it can be really good. Most contractors I know are interested in standardization, efficiency and speed. They are financially incentivized for finishing the job on schedule. They ask all kinds of questions to make sense of the design. What I'm manufacturing? Where I'm getting all the materials from? How long is it going to take? How I'm going to work out the logistics? How am I installing the panels? How fast can I install the panels? Is there additional work that needs to be done once the panels are installed? What does it involve installing the panels? Do I need lifts or do I need scaffolding? What are the safety hazards? After all this questioning, the contractor must have said, we are not installing stone panels, we are installing glass panels. There is more than enough repetition of panels to justify unitization. Why not treat these panels 
just like prefabricated unitized curtain wall panels, take advantage of off-site manufacturing and minimize field work. Get better quality, do faster installation. For the contractor to be able to fabricate the system as unitized panels, they need a new way of detailing, but it should also be a way they are familiar with. Then the question becomes, how do you design a frame structure where multiple panels can be installed in the shop? They probably changed the channel profile to something much stronger to support not one, but four panels at a time. I'm guessing they also revised the channel profile for better air and water tightness. I think they used something more common where the gasket engages with a metal pocket. For hanging the system, they would need an anchor fist and an anchor with a hook. Based on the construction pictures, I'm guessing they used the CNC cut steel plates passing to the aluminum extrusion channel. I'm also guessing they didn't find it necessary to create an offset within the glass assembly and save some, some money. You can clearly see the metal edge around the glass panels, which actually helps protecting the glass. All right. I think there are three takeaways for designers. Lesson number one, it is hard to overstate how important the context is when you are detailing. Recognize the characteristics of your project. Installation of 5,000 panels requires a different approach than the installation of 50 panels. Lesson number two, be obsessed with making field work less and easier for the contractors. This will help with the quality of the project. Lesson number three, don't just rely on raised screen gaskets as the primary way of keeping the water out and for airtight construction. Gasket to metal will seal your buildings better. Thank you for watching. And if you want to find more about construction detail breakdowns, you can also find me on Twitter at ops underscore manual and at Instagram at operations manual. Thank you very much.